Hello, everyone. So should we wait a little or should we start? So it's already 3.45. Ah, OK. Huh. Yeah, so we should be monochronic. So I'm going to talk about monochronic culture. So it's part of my presentation. So OK, so we are going to start on time. So welcome to my session. Um, Thanks, everyone. So my session topic is know your team, know your customers, deliver in multicultural environment. So this is my uh, two, sorry, this is my, uh, this is my two years of observation. So working in multicultural teams, leading multicultural teams, working with different uh, clients. And so a quick introduction of mine. So this is going to create problem for me. So who am I and what I do? So my name is Manohar Alam. So I'm um, Indian living in Paris. So two years ago, I shifted to France for my higher studies. And this is my second DrupalCon. So um, I have done international project management with couple of certification. So this is uh, I'm certified agile project manager. I'll do agile. So I love Agile. I try to implement Agile. So um, I'm not much active on Twitter, but I do tweet. So Manavar Sheikh is my Twitter handle. What I do, so I'm technical project manager at ADX. By this, I mean like I'm from Drupal background. I know how magic happens in background. So sometimes it's create problem for my Drupal team. So because I know stuff, so they feel uh, very conserved while sharing like implementation with me, but yeah, I used to check them. So I used to keep eye on them. So uh, I work in, in multicultural environment. So uh, ADX has uh, like more than 200 of Drupalers having 12 offices. So it's like largest company in France providing Drupal solutions to international clients. Before ADX, I was working with Platform Assets. So in Paris, I worked with Platform Assets and Prior to platform message, I was working in India, so uh, in Drupal company, Shrijan Technologies. So oh uh, yeah, all three companies are here, so all three companies are Drupal sponsors. Uh, so quick uh, agenda, what I'm going to be talking about. So I'm going to talk about intercultural management, so why it's important. And then uh, managing intercultural uh, team, cross-cultural team, and also uh, serving international clients from different geographical region. And then uh, my second part would be like talking about culture. I know culture is like very sensitive topic, but you know, these are my observation. So I put some of my findings for analyzing cultural difference and studying cultural difference, and also uh, in the last to become a cross-culture competent. Yeah, so uh, definition says intercultural management is interdisciplinary human resource field for uh, managing communication, effective interactions between personal and uh, customers across border. So this definition seems uh, hard, so I uh, simplified it here. So what I mean from intercultural management, so it's like managing international team, building a new culture by analyzing existing difference in culture and then providing uh, solutions if uh, you have like conflicts in your multicultural team and different uh, perception of your clients for getting requirements in uh, project model, project development model, and also uh, linking a different cultural difference to come up with like international strategy, international, uh, we can uh, make our like international culture for our multicultural team. So I put like this. So uh, why intercultural management is important? So first, so it's like um, getting international markets, uh, getting business from, uh, um, uh, from across the globe, so serving customers across the globe. And then if you have customers and if you have international market, then you need to analyze your uh, uh, international customer needs. And for that, you will need multicultural team. 
So some members in your team from your uh, local market so that they can analyze needs requirement uh, for your customer. And uh, if you have multicultural teams, then obviously you will have cross-culture conflict. So intercultural management uh, provides uh, knowledge with dealing with this cross-cultural conflict. And based upon um, different um, cultures, so based upon culture difference, we can come up with like um, a common strategy uh, coming with implementing major cultural change in your team. And last one is situation where classical management uh, model doesn't work. So by this I mean, so we used to follow more US culture in our uh, model in IT, so uh, if you have team members from different culture and they will have different style of working, different style of thinking, manipulating, uh, so uh, this can help, so having um, a different win-win uh, situation, win-win strategy for your team. So uh, I put uh, two uh, big challenge, so one is uh, very common, I think we all are working in multicultural environments. So quick uh, question, so how many you have a multicultural team? So yeah, it's common. And how many you have remote teams? Uh, yeah, okay, nice. And how many have a multicultural remote teams? No, so my findings are going to be interesting for you. So uh, second uh, challenge is, are you moving to a new country under European Union? This was my case, so two years back I moved to France and I came in a um, group, like 40 members from 23 countries. So I started living, uh, working, playing with them. So 23 countries and that was like tough for me from India, from uh, high context culture, from high power distance, I came in, um, People with, uh, so I have German colleagues, British colleagues, Americans, so there were lots of cross-culture conflicts. So that's why uh, I tried to put all of them and that, so maybe you all are not agree with those points, but these are like my personal observation. So here, so I put just a definition of culture, what culture means. So uh, culture is very vast topic, so I just put like, a different set of values and norms which a society follows and which comes with different ways of thinking and can be adopted at large scale, so at mass level, and that brings culture. And if you have different norms and those norms uh, come out with difference, cultural difference. So uh, there is an interesting topology from Hofstede. Sorry. So from Hofstede, Hofstede, um, uh, says uh, culture is a software of the mind. So uh, here I put all common problems. So we all have multicultural remote teams and so I put all common problems here. So first one is communication style. So at um, most of the workplace in uh, Europe as well, we have English as a common language. So I work in France, so I work in French culture but we still have English as a common language at workplace. But, uh, and in France, we have uh, people from different European countries. So uh, same in, like, um, in my um, group, so having like uh, uh, members from 23 countries, so they all have their different accents, uh, different fluency, and so those uh, were uh, like creating problem for native speakers. So, in India, so in, in India we have our language, but most of the time we speak English, so Eng Okay. Ah, sorry. So yeah, first time I'm trying with this mic, so that's why. <laughs> so my pitch is <laughs> normally high. So I can <laughs> present without mic. <laughs> uh, okay. It's okay? Okay. Mm, so uh, first is linguistic issue. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. So a uh, linguistic issue in linguistic issue, I put like if um, a project manager uh, from a high context culture and having English as a native language 
And if you have our team members from different European countries, having members having English as a like second and third language, so they will have like different fluency. So most of the time you will struggle hard to understand them. So every time you will try to understand them by asking like questions, double sure. So that will create problem. So sometimes, uh, most of the times I can say like creates problems with my team. So my team is based in uh, Ukraine, Russia. So and they are more, uh, they are not using English as a first language. So this is like common problem which I observe working with Europeans and also with my team. Second is high context and low context. So this is a very interesting for me, high context and low context. So by this I mean like indirect and direct communication. So if you have a team member from high context culture, then uh, instruction will not be clear. So there can be like many hidden instru uh, instruction and your uh, team member from a low context culture will not understand. And if you have a, uh, project manager from low context culture, then everything will, will be like more communication. So lots of communication, your team member may not like that. So a tone challenge, so it's interesting. So uh, I talked about fluency in every um, uh, culture. We have different tones for uh, expressing our ideas, expressing our emotions. So in some culture, having high tone, let's say if you have idea, so Germans, Germans used to uh, share ideas at broader level. So they used to uh, have like high, high, high sound. Uh, that may be a problem for uh, team members from Southeast Asia, Japan, Chinese, uh, Chinese, uh, China, India. So for them, like with low tone is uh, more adequate, so they share ideas with low tone. So this is a common problem, so which uh, I faced. Um, verbal and textual communication. So uh, this is again related to linguistic issue. So let's say if you have team member who is not so much comfortable in uh, English, so uh, uh, he will prefer to have textual uh, conversation with you in which he can use a Google Translate and um, uh, other translation tool to understand you. And if you have a native speaker, then they will prefer to have more verbal communication. So uh, this is uh, dicey for me, so in, uh, in my team, so I have a uh, uh, Members, team members having like English as a native language and uh, English as a second, third language. So I used to maintain a uh, uh, balance between uh, uh, all team members. Some prefer to have verbal communication, some prefer to have textual communication. And uh, last one in communication is unfamiliar words. So by this I mean, so in some culture we have uh, slang, we have, uh, we used to I have some sarcasm, so some of your team members will not understand. So here, so uh, one incident happened with me last uh, week when I was coming here. So uh, X person in my company asked about Y person and I uh, shared, okay, that X person is in go down. So I was telling that that person is in downstairs in storeroom. So I used go down word and French colleague was lost. What does mean go down? And then I quickly checked on internet, go down is more familiar in Eastern Asia, so that means warehouse. So yeah, sometimes we use uh, these kind of words, so that's create like confusion. So yeah, so I checked on internet and then came, so this word is go down is more popular in Asia. So um, if uh, you have different communication style, then you will have conflicts in your team. So it's, I think so. So this, this is very common in multicultural team. So conflicts ha happens due to uh, different uh, understanding. So different uh, misunderstanding. We can say uh, different uh, uh, perception for roles, for responsibilities. Uh, at social and professional level. So uh, it's, uh, if you are in a cross-cultural environment, then it's important to know culture at social level as well. So uh, 
I, I used to get lots of uh, information, lots of insights of different cultures over lunch, and so I, I came with different uh, disagreements. So that's why I put conflicts can happen at social and professional level. So team or individual. So uh, in a, a team, if you have uh, members from um, similar culture, same culture, and if they have conflicts, and you are uh, alone from different culture, then there will be a problem in uh, resolving those conflicts. So uh, maybe your team can be like uh, um, biased, so they will not support you because they belong to the same culture. And so if you are alone, then you can't share at team level. And if they are like in a group, they are, have same concern, then they will prefer to share them at team level. And this can be a problem for uh, leader, for project manager from different culture. Face-to-face, uh, -face, again, so it's like having a high context and low context uh, culture. So some, some of your uh, team members will prefer to resolve conflicts face-to-face. -face. And uh, if uh, you have a problem with your team member and he is not a native speaker, so then he will try to solve uh, conflict over textual uh, conversation. This happened to me, so uh, I was uh, um, not happy with uh, my one of team member, so he was not meeting expectation, and I shared lots of concern, and in the end he shared, so I can't speak in English, so I can't share my ideas, I can't share my concerns, so it's better to have textual conversation. So. Uh, so that's why I put this is a common problem in multicultural team for resolving problems, for resolving conflicts. Body language. Body language is also important. So if uh, you are a native speaker, then you will be more strong in body language, and that can uh, bring uh, confidence of bring down confidence of your team number, a uh, team member. So there were multiple problems in my team, so because of body language, so sometimes they were not preferring to have visual conversation over video call because they were not comfortable in um, English, so it's all about language and communication style. So task completion, so this is interesting. So in different cultures, so we have a monochronic, polychronic people, so monochronic people, so used to work on one task at one time. For them, time and commitment is more important. And if you have polychronic team member, then polychronic team member will have like multiple tasks in multiple direction. And so in, um, in our uh, model, so in project development model, let's have an example. Let's say if uh, you, you had stand up in the morning and you shared uh, what's like our daily task, so what are like today's delivery. You shared task with your team member, and few have like from monochronic ba background, and few of them from polychronic background. So monochronic people, monochronic team member will oppose your uh, priority, because you already shared priority with them in the morning, and if you are, let's say, you discussed uh, some, some problem with clients, and clients uh, asking just to resolve this issue, uh, leave everything behind. So here, your poly um, polychronic team member will pick that task, while monochronic will not. So this will create a team conflict. So because mono, for monochronic, it's like working on one task uh, within timeline, within deadline. And for polychronics, it's interesting. He can pick. Uh, next is I2 details. So it's, uh, again, so it's my observation. So uh, I got one uh, requirement from client, and for this requirement, I, I was not having like much clarity. I asked my team member to provide solution, and those team members, let's say, are from uh, low context culture, so uh, they will ask for more details because uh, um, there may be situation your client is not aware what, what's the solution. And uh, your client asked you to provide that solution. And you have a, a low context uh, team member and low context team member will ask for more details and you don't have. So this is a problem. So and in polychronic, in um, uh, flexible, so if your team member is flexible, then they can have, okay, let's start, let's see. Uh, but monochronic will not give you a favor. 
So this is a problem. So uh, this problem is more common in Agile. So if you have a low context team member, then you can't follow Agile and you can't work in Kanban model uh, with peace. So uh, time and resources uh, provided. So it's again related to a monochronic culture. So if you shared some requirements, some commitments with your team members in monochronic culture, so they will treat deadline as a written on stone. So they will try to finish those, but maybe polychronic not. So they can't, they can't complete on time because they can have excuse like we, we, we are working on multiple tasks. So we are polychronic. So uh, task completion is also more related to personality traits in every team. We have different roles, so uh, different roles like finisher, implementer, resource investigator, planter, uh, task completer. So uh, these, uh, so uh, these uh, task completion is also more related to personality in different culture. So. So uh, rewards association. So this is interesting. So uh, in a team, if you have 10 tasks and your monochronic team member picked two and polychronic picked all and started working simultaneously on all tasks, then your monochronic team member will not be happy because polychronic person will think, OK, so this task is going to bring more business value better relation with clients, better relation with uh, project manager, lead. So maybe he will pick before monochronic will pick. So this is a common team conflict. So uh, this is also interesting for me. So decision making. So in different cultures, so cultures, uh, we have uh, uh, team members from uh, high power distance, low power distance, so uh, they will have a different perception for making decisions. So let's say I'm here, so my team is working there. If they came up with problems, then, then there is no one to take a solution, no one to guide them. Because maybe they are from a high power distance culture and taking decisions is uh, not in their hands. So they will think, okay, let them, um, let's project manager come, he will decide. So what we are going to take, it's not part of our job. So boss is always boss. So yeah, this, this happens. So this happens. So this is very common uh, in a team for taking decisions. If there is no lead, uh, no project manager, and team is facing some technical problems, so they will, they will look for uh, um, decision from higher members. And responsibility, so again, so problems, where there is problem, there will be less, less responsible person. So if problem is like uh, crucial, so if your team members belongs to um, high uncertainty avoidance culture, then they will not uh, try to resolve them. They will not try to take responsibility. So this is again common problem and it's related to decision. So problems and taking um, uh, decisions on problem, addressing those problem. Facts and consequences. This is interesting in, um, uh, in some cultures, so we follow facts. We follow like uh, what we have in our past, what we have in present, and so based upon past and present, we predict future. So if your team members are having um, uh, that consensus mind, so they will try to focus on facts. So let's say a project manager is not there, but they will try to take decision on facts. And, and if uh, you are a project manager and you are not aware of like things in the background, and if you are taking wrong decision, then your team will not say anything. So this happens because you are responsible for taking decision. So this happens. This happens in many cultures in low, uh, in, um, uh, low power distance culture, so team members uh, don't want to take part in decision making process. And in high power distance, if your boss are wrong, then it's okay, he's boss. So individual expectation, so it's um, uh, related to team uh, personality traits, uh, so ways of task completion. So some, some team members will have high expectation uh, 
uh, from themselves and some team members will have less. Someone will try to work within their job roles description and being monochronic and poly polychronic will set their expectation. So epistemology, so this is interesting. So, uh, this, uh, so this was a main uh, uh, point of uh, conflicts. So what uh, I faced in my experience, so during professional and uh, social activity. So in some cultures, so uh, people uh, used to analyze uh, facts. So if you share some incidents, some, some insights with them, they will try to analyze them. They will check on Google. They will uh, um, ask for cognitive means, uh, like facts. And so maybe uh, that will be annoying at some point. So let's say if you shared some idea and you are not sure, and uh, in front of you, your team members start looking, looking for more uh, insights. So that's embarrassing. Sometimes it happens in the friend culture. Verbal over uh, textual. So it's like uh, in some cultures, so, uh, people used to prefer having verbal communication. So uh, if you are a project manager uh, from a high context culture and having like uh, English language, so you will prefer to have like verbal communication so that you can explain stuff to your team. But uh, let's say you have uh, like European team members where English is not a native language. So again, they will uh, try to have like textual uh, conversation and they will ask you a specification most of the time, like detailed requirements. They will try to get insights from them because they, they, they will try uh, to show like they are understanding you, but they are getting nothing. <laughs> so this happens. So they will ask for more specification, more use cases. So, so precise and detailed. So yeah, it's again uh, so related to uh, low context and high context. So um, in my team, so I have few members so I was working with uh, Germans uh, and British, so they were like very comfortable in getting like precise information. You just need to uh, share requirements, what they want, that's all, and they will provide you solution. But in some, some in my other team, so I have like a team member from a low context culture, so always they look for more details. So it's contradictory for me. Like in one team providing like detailed specification, in one team just, just providing requirements in project management tool. And they have that understanding like we are expert, we can provide solutions. And in low context culture, I need to come up with long specification. So this is interesting. So uh, I'm still like um, uh, observing uh, different cultures, different... Uh, uh, my team members uh, in like 12 countries in Europe. So I have team members from Eastern Europe, Scandinavian countries. So it's interesting for me. So I put uh, all these in five categories. So here, so, uh, so we, we uh, uh, in culture, so I put this uh, Hofstede. So this topology is uh, very widely used, very popular for uh, analyzing culture, so analyzing cultural difference. So uh, quick background, so Hofstede, so uh, he's the founder of uh, Institute doing research in intercultural uh, uh, management. So his uh, studies are based on IBM employees, 100K employees of IBM. So uh, main Hofstede topology is based upon like six dimensions. So I mentioned five here. So, and these are power distance, or uncertainty avoidance, UA individualism, collectivism, masculinity, long-term orientation. And there is one indulgence, so it's like more related to um, desire, so controlling your desire for getting short-term and long-term benefits. So power distance, so power distance in simple, so it's like, uh, extent to which uh, we have uh, variations, so hierarchical difference in our uh, organization and also at social level. So I put some artifacts here, so uh, this would help we, uh, us to analyze like culture. 
uh, having high power distance and low power distance. So uh, centralization, so these are like organization stuff, steep param pyramids, supervisors. So uh, uh, one interesting fact I came to know from my Russian team member in uh, Russia, so power distance is uh, too high, it's uh, near 200. So in some situation, they have like five, six people to report in a team and just one developer to work. So it's interesting, uh, power distance. So I put uh, illustration here. So uh, high power distance and low power distance. So picture says lot. And here are artifacts, low power distance culture. So uh, subordinates expect uh, to be consulted. Um, bosses are accessible. So um, I think in Drupal, so we are small. So every company used to have like 50, 100, maximum 200. And we follow a uh, flat hierarchy. So we can relate like we all are low power distance uh, culture. But in low power distance culture, we have uh, some high power distance. That belongs to like country, in which country you are living. So in a uh, startup, you, you do have a uh, low, low power distance, flat hierarchy. But if your startup is in France, in Germany, in Ukraine, so there will be a problem. So here, so these are um, artifacts of low power distance and high power distance subordinates. Um, um, expect subordinates expect to be consulted, boss um, to be told what to do. Sorry, so I can't see from here. Uh, privilege and status are normal, superiors, uh, inaccessible. So I put, so these, uh, these uh, I think this, uh, this is more interesting. So putting all countries on low power distance and high power distance. So I um, put all uh, European countries, so uh, north, north, east, south, and west. So Scandinavian countries, Denmark, Finland, Sweden are like low power distance. Austria, Austria has very low. So it's like 10, 15 percent. Uh, power distance, Luxembourg, Hungary, United States, and UK. I'm still not sure why on Hofstede stated I mentioned US and UK are in low power distance. So it's contradictory for me. So high power distance, so Greece, uh, Portugal, France, Belgium, India. So I was in high power distance culture back in India, and again I'm in high power distance in France, and my uh, team uh, are in Russia and Ukraine, so it's a problem for me. So having like all people, high power, distance culture, so sometimes, so uh, I have like deadlock in my team. So uh, every time I need to follow, I need to follow them what to do. Because it's not my perception, it's their path perception as well. They are like uh, from high power distance culture, they want to work in their role. So. Uh, this is interesting, uncertainty, avoidance, so uh, degree to uh, which we accept ambiguity. So um, if uh, you have a team members, if your team is like having high UA, then I think you can't implement Agile. So high UA is threat to Agile for me. Uh, so um, in Agile, so most of the time requirements are not clear, project is like evolving. Uh, you, you can't predict what's going to be happen with your client. Uh, so maybe they are like evolving with their requirements. And if you have your team members from uh, high, high UA, then they are not going to work. So things will not be um, good for them. So every time they will ask for lots of details from you and and you will, you will ask your client. And if client is also not ready to provide you all details, so this, this is a big problem. So for me, so, uh, so for some clients, so I faced this problem. So a project was evolving. So a project was from a startup. So we were building products. And clients was like coming from requirements with their partners. So this was like problem. This was like changing requirements suddenly and having like hot discussions with team why I'm changing requirements. First, like putting my perception and then again putting client's perception, why client want change, why clients want things in that way. So 
Here I put uh, UA, so uh, it's interesting, Scandinavian country, just Denmark and Sweden has low UA. Again, U US and UK. India, so uh, uh, in India, so we have uh, low UA, so we used to accept surprises. Uh, we do accept surprises at last minute. So, uh, and here in France, Austria, so I, I highlighted Austria. So being a low power distance culture, Austria is on high UA. So it's like implementing uh, Agile in Austrian team is like big trade. So yeah, for me it's a big trade. And I have team member from Russia and Ukraine. So most of the time I discuss like, no, we are not waterfall, we are doing Agile. So for them it's not clear because requirement is not clear. So we can't freeze requirement. So with the sprint, we used to evolve with requirements for a few projects. So uh, I have lots of discussions so, uh, to come up with uh, solutions, having like providing uh, detailed requirements, so freezed requirements to my team members. So uh, another uh, dimension is individualism and collectism. So it's interesting. So in individualism, so ties between individuals are loose. People like to work more. Relationships are less important for them. Tasks uh, are like having more priorities. And in the other hand, in collectivism, so uh, people like to work in group. So. Uh, here, so I put some uh, artifacts for high individualism culture. So these are like identity based on uh, individuals. So we uh, respect boss. So, uh, so high individualism comes with like high power distance culture. So task prevails over relationship. So it's like a wor work to leave or leave to work. So I mentioned somewhere. So here, so in collectivism, it's opposite. So the uh, team likes to work in groups, so relationships are more important. So let's see infographics here. So weak and uh, low uh, individualism. So Greece, Portugal, India, China. So we work uh, in India, so it's hard. So task prevails over relationship. Indians work a lot. And we have Austria, Japan. And in high uh, individualism, we have uh, Finland, Denmark, Scandinavian countries, uh, UK, US, Netherlands, Belgium, France. France is again high individualism. Uh, uh, masculinity and femininity. So it's uh, very close to uh, individualism and uh, collectivism. So uh, masculinity is more for uh, material success and femininity is quality of life. So um, I put some artifacts here. So these are my observations. So if I'm not uh, correct, so you can, you can ping me. You, you can share with me your uh, insights. So these are my uh, observations. So in high masculinity, we have like leave to work, distinct gender roles. Managers are expected to be assertive in direct communication, high context. And in high femininity, it's like France. So France prefer to have like a work-life balance. Quality of life is more important. They work to live, not leave to work. So here I put uh, my, again, so country-wise. So it's interesting. Scandinavian countries having low masculinity. Um, and here, so high masculinity, India, US, UK. Mm, that's interesting. Austria. So Austria is there in high masculinity. So, sorry, a long-term orientation. So it's like fifth uh, dimension of Hofstede topology. So it's like uh, if uh, you are going for an engagement, so in some culture we prefer to have like long-term orientation. So we look for like long-term benefits with uh, certain loss in the beginning. And in some culture, we have like short-term goals, short-term orientation for making more profits. So um, here, so these are like some artifacts of long-term orientation, persistence, ordering, um, uh, and observing relationship, bias status, loss of face, uh, saved by thrifty. So uh, if uh, oriented towards future rewards, so yeah, again, it's related to long-term goals, so short terms looking for more benefits. People try to spend more for getting long-term benefits, higher profits. 
and I, I think like short term orientation are related to uh, culture having like low UA and low PD, low power distance where people like to have like um, uh, more profit. So here I put again, so some classification. So uh, I put again, uh, so, uh, so all uh, my observation uh, revolves around European countries. So Scandinavian countries, Spain, US, India, UK, and high Austria. So it's interesting. France having long-term orientation, high Russia and Ukraine. So, uh, so here, so uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we check like uh, common problems in um, cross-cultural team. So I put all together how to become cross-culture So for me, first thing is like a, a reduce into uh, centrism. So by this, I mean like having uh, understanding like my culture is the best. So most of the time people used to think like his culture or her culture is the best. So we need to uh, uh, do some gratification here. So we need to observe other cultures. So we need to have like perception. So um, maybe uh, we need to explore more other cultures so that we can come up with their interesting dimension. So first thing, I think this one. So it's important. So I have seen problems in many Germans and British. So they have this feeling. So, so this, this is my observation. So again, so I'm having a hard day with Mike. <laughs> So uh, understand communication style. So why it's not working? <laughs> so uh, communication style. So uh, if English is not a nat native language, so uh, you can have like some some loose points in your team. So if you have uh, team members from different culture and some are from same culture, then you can uh, accommodate another uh, language. So maybe internally, so they can discuss their problems, their concern in that language. Set ground rules. So this is important. So um, so uh, in a, every project, so before starting having like kickoff, I used to have ground rules. Ground rules. Uh, cover all uh, points like having low context, high context, monochronic, polychronic. You have to be on time. If you have concern, then you need to be like more precise. If you have problem, and if you have like better suggestion, if you if you are not liking things, then you need to come up with solution, better way. So you can't suggest like this problem. This solution is not going to address this problem. So if you have better solution, then come up with that. Otherwise, just just follow. So what, uh, what all are doing. So yeah, so this is interesting, setting ground low rules, uh, setting guidelines for team. So, um, so, uh, so in a multicultural remote team, most of the time we have like uh, different time zone. So in different time zone. So uh, this, um, there was problem. So I w when I was like working at platform as such, so we were working around the clock. We were having team members from, um, North America to Australia. So uh, people we are working like round the clock. We have uh, uh, someone to address your uh, problem, so address customer's problem. So in that case, team guidelines will work. So if uh, there is any problem, if uh, your um, team, uh, like uh, different departments of your uh, project development looks for some um, uh, information, so they can uh, refer to team guidelines. So like uh, raising issues, raising concerns, uh, checking a specification, and if you have any question, and if your project manager is sleeping at that time, so what you can do? So those things are in team guidelines. So you, you can see my uh, Chrome here. So I used to put like different time zones. So this is very interesting plugin. So these uh, time zones, uh, from my team members, so this is very interesting. In the beginning, I used to put, but yeah, I'm still using. So these we can put in our uh, team guideline. And cultural flexibility, so it's again uh, reducing into um, centrism, so uh, you need to explore uh, different cultures, so you need to uh, be like sometimes friendly with your uh, team members, from different cultures, so if they are alone, like uh, uh, having some soft corners for them, like having more lunches with them, discussing problems where they are facing, if uh, 
they have problem in language, if they have problem in communication, then coming up with solution like providing written solution, written instruction for them. So these uh, these things uh, brings like flexibility. So I think so. I'm doing this so for having like win-win situation for my different team members from different backgrounds. Uh, also, shared responsibility. So by this, I mean, so it's not project manager or, lo uh, or your business uh, product owner, business analyst guy, so who will be responsible for all like budgets and timeline. So if uh, we have, um, so in every team we have expertise. So we can share some responsibilities, technical responsibilities with different team. We can ask uh, suggestions from them solutions from them and we can discuss uh, those solutions at team level and we can take like individual decisions how they feel and we can challenge not challenge is not a bad word i think so we can ask for like individual feedback so maybe uh, some team member will not be comfortable on sharing at team level during meetings but it's good to um, uh, touch them individually, so politely, silently, that would help. And uh, if you are like a boss, you are a project manager, then you can share openly at team level, getting inputs individually from different team members, and also follow-ups in the meeting. So it's very important. So I have seen this problem in uh, many cultures. Uh, so uh, if... Uh, People are like having, uh, it's uh, related to personality as well, like introvert and extrovert. So if you have team members from low power distance and low context, so they will, um, they might not take more part in your meetings. So they, uh, they might not take part in decisions and they might feel uh, shy for sharing updates, uh, for sharing problems. So in this case, again, you can ping them individually and you can follow up them after meetings. So this will bring like more uh, more uh, trust between you and your team members from different uh, culture and also good for like team building. And you can also plan like team building activities. Uh, in, in Agile, in Scrum, we follow like sprints. So after a sprint, uh, you can have like some, some social activities. For a stand-up, you can have like uh, rotation for hosting a stand-up so that after some time you're like, uh, uh, team member having like English as a second language can become comfortable at least in sharing updates at team level. Uh, so uh, these are my observations. So uh, now I'm in France in high context, high power distance culture. So I put uh, my uh, observations. So comparing France with Germany, with uh, uh, United States. So these are... Uh, interesting facts, you can see Japan, so Japan has like high values on all cultural dimension. So uh, is there any Italians here? Oh, okay, so I think you will offend. <laughs> have, you, have you watched this video? No. Ah, it's very interesting. So let's play this one. Ah, sound. Oh my God, sound is not working. Mm, uh, this, this, uh, okay, sound is not working for me, <laughs> bad luck. But yeah, this video is interesting. So uh, you can also get like a visual. Oh. Interesting.
polychronic macchiato caldo, di caffeinato bollente e poca schiuma, molto lungo, tiepido in tazza grande, caffè d'orzo macchiato freddo doppio zucchero, ristretto semifreddo in tazza piccola senza schiuma, americano corretto grappa con latte doppia panna salsa parte. This one is interesting. <laughs> so yeah so at the end there is no uh, hard and fast rule for like doing project management for managing cultural um, cross cultural team so we can have like Win win, so we can come up with like solutions in different culture. So, uh, here, so I put uh, again interesting. So, in ideal world, so the policemen would be like English, car mechanics would be German, cooks would be French, innkeepers would be Swiss because Swiss are like more on time organized, and lovers would be Italian. So that, uh, because of that video, I think that's why. <laughs> so they put like lovers would be Italian. So they will not know. <laughs> there will be no rule for them. <laughs> so in living hell, just opposite. So policemen would be German. So Germans are really strict. So cooks would be English. I don't know this one. So I copied from <laughs> Google. <laughs> so yeah. So these are interesting, innkeepers would be Italian. So that's all about my session. So these were all my uh, personal observations. So it's not about like hitting any culture, so not pointing any culture, just to come up with like solutions for leading multicultural teams and delivering customers from different cultures. So that's all uh, from my session. So do you have any question? Did you 
Um, no, no. It's a, I think it's a common problem with like people uh, who has like intercultural management uh, knowledge. So, but no, uh, I think no. So, yeah, it's not good. So, uh, let's say uh, if I have like new member from different location, or if I'm going to have like meetings with my team. So I do check uh, from where they belong. So what are their, their cultural dimension? So I do check. So it's. Yeah, it's uh, for like some pre uh, pre work, some homework for me. So it's always like good for me. So I used to do, but it's not good like judging any team uh, member on their culture. So it's it's bad. <laughs> I would not prefer to <laughs> select any one from. And right now I have like twelve, fifteen members from uh, Russia and Ukraine. So all are from like high power distance, low UA. Uh, high UA, sorry, so it's problem. But yeah, so after like my four or five uh, months of work, so I came up with solution. So now things are moving ahead. So uh, I ha I have like a couple of like eight, nine projects with Russian and Ukrainian team. So three or four of them are live now. So no problem at all now. Yeah, it's always interesting like, if you have like some uh, intercultural knowledge, so every time you will analyze people on culture. So more question? No? Okay. Thank you. Then uh, uh, 55 minutes. <laughs>